Welcome back to the Saffron Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to establish a priority of what we want to work on next to get this into a MVP state. So what we did is we created a list of things that uh, specific features that need to be worked on or tweaked uh, before getting this into an MVP state. So here we just have some notes on that. And to start it off, we have a recipe form. So this is how we actually enter uh, recipes into Saffron. And so right now, we we just made uh, some changes this week. So before, the big change that we made was how you actually insert the instructions and how you insert the ingredients. So we can take a look at that right now. Here is um, what you do now. So for example, if I want to add ingredients, what we had before was a modal, and now, uh, what we switched to is basically a full screen uh, text editor that you can use. And one of the reasons why we wanted to switch to this is because a modal was kind of getting cramped and it's kind of nice to have uh, your ingredients be able to fill out the whole the whole screen. So you can type um, as you would and then you can make things into headers and add different kind of styling. And this also add, leaves us open in the future if we want to add more styling. Right now we kept it simple. Of just headers and links but maybe in the future we want to do bold italic and so on um, and this is also what it looks like for the steps uh, as well and uh, that uses the same technology to create those and then one thing uh, that we do after you actually type out something so if I do one cup sugar as one of my ingredients after you uh, type that out we do a parsing step with that uh, this is something we did before as well, but we just did a small tweak in how we actually store this. And this used to be a modal as well that we made into a full screen because it's easier to see. Um, so with this, we now have a new field, which we call the keyword. So this is something that actually won't be used in the MVP itself, but something later when we actually get into the grocery list. Um, and the reason why we're doing this is we kind of want to know what your ingredient is. Um, so for example, I have sugar here, so you obviously know the, the ingredient is sugar, but sometimes it's a little bit more complex. They might say one cup chopped carrots. Now, I don't know if uh, the parser is going to catch this. Okay, it did. That's nice. Um, it sees that the keyword is carrot, and the reason why we want to do this is because you might have one cup chopped carrots, and you might have one cup sliced carrots. And both of those are carrots, so when you're at the grocery store, you want to buy two cups of carrots. Whether they're chopped or sliced doesn't matter, but it is important to know that in your recipe. So that's something we've been working with. Um, so let's talk about what left we have with just this form itself. So Mom, do you want to just talk about what you think uh, we have completed and what we have left from the notes that you have? Uh, the button... Uh, we removed for add uh, individual ingredients. The previous form uh, allowed a user to actually line by line create this parse view if they wanted and not paste uh, an ingredient list. And, and for some people, they might have preferred that. But with this new editor, it is so friendly to just working uh, in the paste view that we're going to encourage the users to just go straight into that and then uh, the parse view will be the step they see after they paste. And what's nice about this parse view is we really simplified what happens. We at one point had the, the lines of the ingredients uh, being able to move up and down vertically. Uh, we also let people get rid of lines prior to this at this view and we thought there were just too many things that were going on. So we split that um, among the views and I think that was a good, a good decision. I'm just starting to test this and use this and I really like it. I love the open feel. I love um, that the um, pace view in both the instructions and the ingredients both will be very familiar to users. It'll feel like being in a, in a word processor. So they should be very comfortable using it. And yeah, so we actually like kind of changed what our flow was going to be. Um, before, what we thought the user would do really was copy some ingredients from somewhere. 
um, paste it into the form and then we would basically parse out what they pasted and it would look like a screen like this. So we'd break out the uh, pasted ingredients that they put into the amount unit ingredient um, and then they would basically edit all their stuff in kind of the parsed view. Um, and basically what she was talking about earlier, it just got too cluttered, too many things on that one screen, and it wasn't as friendly to work in versus now uh, the flow is when you paste it in, the editor that you paste the ingredients in is really where we see you working in. So after you paste it, you can change stuff, move stuff around, that sort of thing. And then this secondary view after you paste it um, is just to make sure everything looks correct um, when we parse it. And this parse is important because that's what we use for kind of features down the line. Uh, so that's what she's referring to, to the paste screen and the parse screen. So before we had a button that was called individual ingredients, which would take you directly to this screen here, um, to the to the parse view. So now you basically takes a two clicks to get to the parse view. You first go to the editor and then to the parse view. So back to our list of things. We remove the button um, for that. So now we just have a button that says edit or add ingredients. Um, and we also remove the modals at the top. So next thing is the recipe preview pane. Um, do we do we do that? Uh, yes. Uh, with removing the modals, um, we're utilizing the right side of, of the display to actually show the forms, and uh, and that's the parse form. And okay, yeah. So that was something we originally talked about, right? So something we were considered doing. Um, if we come back to the recipe form. Uh, was having this right side be the editor and the left side stay what we have over here. So we had the left side being a form and the right side being a form. Um, but then we, we talked about it's kind of confusing to have two forms next to each other. So we just decided to make when you're typing in the ingredients or the instructions, it takes up the whole screen. So yeah, you're right. We ended up doing that. So we're done with that. Um, and then move through the cooking times through the keyboard. That's actually... Um, this down here, right? So being able to uh, add cooking times and then to add another cooking time instead of just clicking a button. So right now we have a button if you want to add a cooking time um, and you might want to add multiple cooking times. So you click the button multiple times. You're wanting to be able to just tab through. Is that what that's about? Yes. Um, I personally uh, would prefer to stay on the keyboard rather than switch to click on a mouse when I'm filling this out. And I wanted the user to have that option as well. So you could click on the button three times, or what happens most of the time is the, I'll click the first one, and it'd be nice as you're typing to just hit a tab or hit return, uh, enter to to create your next line, and then you can you can zip through the the times fairly quickly. Okay, so tab would add. So when you get to the last field, you're wanting to hit tab here, and tab would add another cookie time. A new line, yes. So do you want tab to do that or do you want enter to do that? Um, either. Would, I mean, whichever one you think would be. Okay. I think uh, the, the thing about tab is you see when I tab, it takes me to the next field. I'm not sure if we would be breaking that behavior by adding another tab there. I think there. enter seems to make more sense to me. And Doing tab, enter there? Yes, and tab prior. Enter is kind of weird too. I'm not sure which one. We can experiment. It's very easy to add okay. a key that adds that. So we can try both and see which one's more intuitive. Okay. So, okay, that's something that I need to add. I haven't done yet. Um, we kind of talked about the parsing strategy. But again, uh, I don't think we need to go too in-depth with the parsing strategy right now because that's not something... Uh, we need for the MVP, but is uh, something we need to improve on whenever we get to the grocery list. We have a parsing strategy, at least right now. Is there anything else you want to touch on with that? No, I think we're good. Okay. Um, and then the review field title design, um, was that just the... Uh, that was the, the input field, particularly in the parsing view. And because we had all the lines, whether we wanted to keep the labeling above. I guess we should go to, if we go to a recipe, we can see this better. Um, 
and you can see it all all the lines. Yeah, I, I right now I think it's still pretty readable, and um, because there are different fields, there's a title field, uh, there's a recipe link field, and there's then the individual ingredients. It's important to have the labeling above the field, otherwise. Um, you might not be able to track what. Sure. So you want to be able to know that this is an amount and this Correct. is an ingredient. And so we have a placeholders above that will let you know. Okay. So we're pretty happy with that. So the only thing really with the recipe form that is yet to do is to work on like the keyboard, for example, with the um, uh, adding that to the cooking time. Yes. And I think there might be some small like design changes that you can point out and add. Um, One thing we were this. we talked about is on the right hand side since we're using it for a recipe preview. Is it possible to show a recipe preview just next to here? Yeah, we, we go can, into we can pop in this. Oh. Or do you want a recipe? Do we have one? That, yes, exactly. This is perfect. So, um, can you scroll down just a little bit? Yeah. The other way. Oh, to the top. Yes. So we. Uh, introduced titles on the right hand side um, since we're using the right hand pane to show different things whether it be the parsing or the editor for uh, adding ingredients or adding and I think that's going to help the user know where they are in the form and so the the top says recipe preview here and then when you click on um, the instructions it is labeled instructions and when you click on ingredients now the the buttons that are on the right we're still working up the wording so that it's clear if somebody wants to go back in the form process or if they want to go forward that that's real clear um, so I think that's something we want to work yeah, on. Yeah we have some temporary but that doesn't require uh, any coding or too much coding on my part just switching out the No just the, text. The, just the naming yeah. but the naming will be real important so that somebody doesn't get confused where they are or um, if they if they click on the button, they're surprised at what they're seeing. So, another thing I need to add, which um, we don't have down, is uh, with the photo. So before we were picky on what dimensions we would accept for the photo. So I think it was eight hundred by four hundred was that and bigger that we'd accept. Um, and I think we changed our mind on how we want to do that now. So we now want to allow pretty much any size picture, and if the picture is smaller. We're going to add just a background around it and center it. Is that right? Yes. So I need to I need to code that part to uh, handle pictures of smaller size and add the background. I think at some point we actually made the background. I think that's already done. That yes, doesn't need designing. No, that's it's somewhere ready. in the, Slack or something we can find. The it. thing that's key about that is resolution on 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 images. Um, if you enlarge photos that are too small, they can look poor, and we want to make sure the quality is as high as possible on the images. And a lot of times, uh, somebody might not realize what size the photo is to begin with, or that there can be a lot of different sizes on the internet, or that you take with your own camera. So um, w by putting a background around the picture, that the picture will stay the same size, which will be the best quality. And then we'll just have an extra real subtle background to go around it so that it looks it, it looks nice. And then the person, if they want to do a bigger picture, they can certainly add a bigger picture. But And we'll shrink it down because we're using the dimensions 800 by 400 for our picture view. So if someone does a bigger one, we can shrink it down without using uh, without messing up the picture. But we can't get a smaller picture and put it up, right? Because that oh. was where it messes it up. What happens is you're you're taking you're trying to make the pixels hold more detail, and it, it actually creates a real blurred look or a soft look. Yeah, that's right. And it's you fuzzy. lose quality. Okay, so that that's something. So that's something I'm going to be working on too. Um, so that's pretty much that. That wraps up the the form and changes we need to make there. Um, so the next thing is just organizing our recipes into cookbooks. So this is something I know we talked about how we wanted to remove. We have a, a whole page right now um, where you can add recipes to um, to cookbooks, this guy. So we're actually going to remove this totally. And instead, to be able to add recipes to cookbooks, 
just use our search. So you'd be able to just search a recipe. So I could search rice um, and I could add this basmati rice to a cookbook. And so we need to add an icon up here um, to be able to do that. And I think we want to also add some search, um, other things to the search to make the search be able to find, for example, recipes that are not in cookbooks. Yes. Um, when we were kind of evaluating the way we were putting the cookbooks together, we felt like the page that we created for um, adding the cookbooks really wasn't as, as good as we'd like it to be. Um, you couldn't tell what the recipe looked like. We were just using the recipe title to try and sort it and put it into cookbooks. So we love the search that we were using for the overall um, product. And we thought, why not com combine this view and search titles, the recipe shows the picture and also shows the chef or the, the person that prepared the recipe. So all that information is kind of nice to know when you're putting the cookbook together and you can, and you can sort by who the chef is. And that's really nice. Um, we also wanted to be able to, uh, with filtering, um, identify if something isn't in a cookbook. So we felt like we could just add a few more enhancements onto this general search instead of building two searches in two places. And then we like the idea of actually having the recipe on the right hand side and just adding an icon um, at the top uh, that would allow us to uh, have it go directly to the cookbook from this view. Um, and we're thinking about just adding uh, the cookbook icon that we have already in our main nav and just add a plus sign uh, to it so that again that would be a clear indication of what that icon did. Yeah and from a tech point of view from when we were doing this so over here uh, when we would I have basically two types of searches so the search that we had before when we wanted to add recipes to cookbooks what I did for this is I would actually fetch all the user's recipes. So right now I have all the user's recipes loaded in uh, on the client side, and then I would just do a client side search. So here is just like a simple string search that I would look for uh, what's in the titles. So for example, here I can see all the ones that have Hunan in it. Um, as opposed to the search that I have for pretty much all the recipes, is this is a full text search. So it's looking at the ingredients as well as the title and also allows you to do um, find things better. So for example, I don't know if you have anything with carrot and mushroom, um, but I could do carrot space mushroom and I can find all the recipes that have both those ingredients in it. So being able to search that way is much better than what we had before. So when trying to just find stuff to add to cookbooks, we thought that'd be a better experience. So we need to add an icon here. Um, that is yet to be designed yet, right? So we need to do we need to do that. So we need to pick a, the priority of what we want to work on next. So what are you going to be working on next? You you said you were working on uh, kind of creating a components for that we're going to use across the site. Uh, yes, and actually that's something I wanted to bring up when you mentioned the icon. Um, the flow that would happen when you're looking at this recipe and you click on the new icon, which would be the cookbook with a plus sign, I like to use the drop down um, that we're using on the bottom of the form, and that could be exactly. So if if we had a modal that included this drop down, uh -huh. and then and then you would pick your cookbook, and then you would pick your section and then be able to save it, that's what we would need to have happen off when you click on that. Okay, so you see basically an icon that brings up a modal, and then in the modal you first select the cookbook and then you select the section. Yes. Okay. And then I, I and then that could be saved again and that and that just gives the user another opportunity. When they load actually enter the recipe the first time, they may not know where they want to put it. So um, if they do, that's great. And then go ahead and do it in the form and then they don't have to worry about it. So yeah, so right now we have one place where you can add it to the cookbook. That's when they first add the recipe. 
Um, but they also might not even have the cookbook made, for example. Correct. Um, so, like, if someone's for, new to saffron, they might just add a recipe first. And right. then they want to add that recipe, start creating a collection of stuff. And the, um, the first page where we create the cookbook and we create the sections, I think that still is a good view. Um, if you click on the open book, the open this icon. One? Yes. Oh, this one, the, yeah. So right now we had two pages. We had this page where you set up your cookbook and then set up your sections, and then we were adding them. So here we're just going to be setting up our cookbook and setting up the sections, and then when you're actually in the recipes or adding a recipe, that's when you would be uh, putting... Yeah, so this is where you set up the sections for it. Mm -hmm. So I think this still works well, but I think once we get the icon developed in the modal and we actually work through that flow and just yeah. test it some more, I think we'll have a better idea. I think this is a good start at least. Yes. And we can expand on this if we need to. And I think it's functioning well enough right now. Yes. But um, as far as what else I'm working on, um, I have really um, wanted to consolidate a lot of the UI styles and just go over everything and, and give you um, a clear picture of what all the specifications are for the type and color. Um, we've been using Sketch as a layout program, and I've been providing Ben with layouts that he actually inspects and then builds from to, um, to do his development. And there's, there's, it gives him a really good idea of what direction I'm going for, but there still, you still can sometimes miss some of the, some of the little things, um, that go on between sketch and the actual development. And then also sometimes just really, really looking at your specifications, on different displays, you might want to tweak things. So there's another um, uh, pass of refinements that go on when you're actually finishing this all up. Yeah, we get like, I would say like 90% there. And then there's like just some stuff lost in translation between going from sketch to CSS. Yes. And um, so anyway, I, I it's really good for me to... Um, to look at look at everything, it gives me a chance to really fine tune just um, all the button specifications and to create components that we can reuse that'll help with with and simplify the the production. So um, I'm I'm building something that you and I'm actually working in Sketch to develop that. Um, it'll it'll have the specifications as long uh, as well as the actual. Um, components. So I think it'll be a good tool to work from to get consistency and and uh, to simplify the UI too. Yeah, that I think that'll be really helpful. Uh, and then basically I can take those sketch components, build them into React components. And then when you're using the sketch components for your layouts, I can then use my React components for the CSS layouts. Uh, and I think that'll transition really smoothly. Yes. And then we can fine tune the components in isolation if we need to and that sort of thing. That'll be super helpful. Um, so we, we, we have some stuff that we want to do for the cookbooks. What do you want to work on? Do you want, uh, or what do you want me to work on next? Do you want me to, um, start building out, um, the modal that we talked about with this? I can at least get it started with the, the icon that the user clicks on. Um, I can just put a dummy icon for now and get the functionality working and put the uh, pop the modal up and the user can click on that. Do you see that's what you want to add next? Uh, work on next? Yeah, I think that would be great. All right, so after we get that, I guess the search also comes hand in hand with that. Yes, the search panel, um, We I kind of broke this out, but uh -huh. they do complement each other because we're using this search panel to now also um, fill the cookbook. Um, but the search also needs to um, include maybe the most recent recipes, recipes not assigned to cookbooks, and some other things we want to tick off. So... Some more ways to just kind of search yes. stuff. Yeah. So I need to provide you a layout for that. Uh, that kind of shows that direction and and keeps the 
the search panel from being too cluttered too. So Okay, so we'll do the cookbooks. We'll add that modal. Then we'll add the extra things that we want to do on the search. Um, and then the next thing is the recipe view. And actually, I think we've done some of these things. Um, I'm not sure what this one is, but we can just skip to these two. To sh uh, we've done at least set up a symbol thing. So now when we um, add a recipe um, in our editor that we created, there's a little symbol thing we can click on. And we can now see some cooking symbols, or at least right now it's mostly just fractions, but they are styled. So if you compare one that one fourth to that one fourth, you can see that there's a difference in that. So we have the symbol set up now. And so with that, we just now need to, we can add more symbols to this little pop-up that the user can add in. Um, or I guess the user can add in. We need to add in some more symbols if we want. Um, and then the other part of that was image quality. So when users were uploading images, uh, we actually crop them to 800 by 400. Um, that way uh, we save space. So we that's the largest uh, dimensions we use on the website. So there's no need to store um, really large images that the user uploads if it's a lot bigger. Um, and that we were losing quality there. Um, the, basically what I was using to resize it I was using, I was doing it on the front end and using canvases to resize the image. It was getting a little fuzzy, um, but I figured out what was going wrong there and we fixed that. Um, so I think most of these things are done. Do you remember what the, at the add new recipe to cookbook icon is? That's the icon we've been talking okay, about. Okay, so that's the thing we with, just, so that yeah. goes with uh, yes. what we had above. Yes. And the, the other thing about thinking about the size of your image, image and storing it is there's a huge performance um, boost boost yes that happens when you're not saving images that are so big and that way when we load you notice on the search bar there's a lot of images you notice um, our images are pretty big of, for the recipe so we want we don't want the user to be sitting there waiting for stuff to load on um, you know the images yeah on bigger the, side. the image longer it takes to load the image so yeah. we don't want uh, extra load time on that. And then we do have a placeholder, if you can scroll up just a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's cases where recipes don't have a picture, and that's totally fine. But on our search bar, we wanted to have some kind of uh, representation of basically uh, a non-photographed. Um, well, we want them all in the same form, right? So it's not... Yes. Because um, we want to be able to scroll down and have it be uniform on the side. So... Um, that's not an image that is broken, and that's not an image that isn't isn't being pulled up properly. That is a design that we purposely put in there um, as a filler, um, just so that you can scroll easily and and see the the titles of the recipe in the same place with the the um, the cook as well. Yeah. All right. So then we're gonna do the cookbooks. We're gonna do then do the search with that. Um, is there anything else that we want to touch on? I know you said you're working on the UI UX stuff and doing the components. So we're going to, uh, I'm sure there will be changes with that and styles we'll be adding in. Yes. And that's just something we'll look at all the time. Yeah. That won't be like, yeah. So. And then what do you see doing after this? I see the next two things left would be onboarding, uh, which is helping if someone's first time using Saffron, um, basically a, a page or a screen to just kind of guide them in the first steps they take when using the product um, to get first users just comfortable using it. And second, the landing page. I guess we can do it in those that order. I like doing everything um, for the product first. Um, and um, the onboarding would be the next thing after the um, the product feature list for the MVP is completed and um, and then go into the landing page at, at the... Do we have anything else we want to add besides this? Because I think we're actually quite close if these are the only things left. I think I think this is it. Um, I think the, the landing page will take a little bit to build and the onboarding will take... Actually, I don't know how long the onboarding will take. We'll talk further in the future what we want to do for onboarding because there's a couple options we can take on that. Um, I think 
uh, that's I have a pretty good idea of what's left now uh, that we I need to do. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about? I think that's good. All right, so then that's the end of this episode. Thank you guys for listening.